Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike with Nano Dots, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and in today's video, we're gonna get busy with the Apple Pencil. I'm gonna show you my creative process behind a real project that I worked on, which is creating a brand new podcast album cover for the Daily Tech After Party, which is my Apple-themed podcast, which if you're not subscribed to, the link's down in the description. So the old artwork, it was kind of just something that I put together really quickly just to have something, but I didn't necessarily love it, and the picture is just not good. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I went from zero, scratch, to finished podcast album cover using nothing but my iPad Pro. Basically, I just wanna give you guys an opportunity to learn from what I did. I'm not saying it's the best or the way that you have to do something like this, but just to get some ideas of how you can actually use the iPad for your creative workflow. So in order to get this whole process started, one thing that I did was go into MindNode, which is one of my go-to apps, to just get organized. I knew I wanted a new podcast cover art that consisted of face-based artwork, so I knew that I wanted it to still feature my face in some form or another, but not necessarily just a straight-up photo, like last time. Then I wanted to make sure that it was gonna be different from other tech podcasts out there, right? So a little bit of branding, something that can stick in your brain, and when you see it, you instantly know, oh, that's the Daily Tech After Party. That's what I'm looking for. And then finally, I just wanted something that still clearly represented that I was the host. So I didn't want it to be so abstract that I was unrecognizable and that people didn't actually connect this podcast with Chris, the person making it. And then what I did was just get a little more organized. I drilled in, I said, here's where I'm gonna check. Behance, Dribble, and then just Google. And then just to make sure I covered all my bases, I wanted to check other Apple podcasts so I could see what was out there and make sure that this was gonna be unique among this segment. So that's it, that's pretty much how I got organized before I got started. So then what did I do? I fired up Behance, which is behance.net, which is owned by Adobe, and I looked for some face art. And once I found something that had a little bit of interest to it that was a little different, then I just tapped on it, and then I took a screenshot using the Apple Pencil by just dragging up from the corner there, and then I grabbed the corners and just cropped those in to get rid of any of the fluff, the stuff that I wouldn't really need. It didn't have to be super accurate or anything. This is just kind of a rough thing so I can throw it into my mood board. Now I spent a decent amount of time doing this because I wanted to make sure that I had a broad selection of inspiration to give me a lot of ideas. You know what they say, there's nothing new under the sun. And that's pretty much true when it comes to design, I've realized. But what I wanted to do was kind of take a mix of different styles to kind of form something new at least. Then of course I also decided to pop over to Dribble and just see what was over there. And as you can see, there's definitely some interesting stuff here. Now I didn't have a Dribble account or at least if I did, I don't remember what it is. So I just zoomed in and then took my screenshot from there to surpass having to create an account to see it larger. All right, so after a while, I ended up with a decent amount of inspiration that I had screenshotted. And what I wanted to do was create a mood board where I could also make some notes as well. So instead of just leaving it in files and in photos, what I did was I went into my notes. And then from here, I just created a note called podcast cover art mood board. And I dumped all of those photos in here so that I could come in and not only reference them, but then make some notes about them as well. Now I could have used something like Morfolio Board, which I've featured several times before on applehype.com and just in videos here. And that's really built to be a dedicated mood boarding app where you can collect inspiration and put together a project, put some notes together. But this isn't really something that I do a lot. So I don't feel like I need a dedicated app here. And I just wanted to use something that anybody could use out there without having to pay or do any in-app purchases. So then I just spent some time kind of looking at this, getting some ideas. I really kind of like this sketchy drawing of I think Joaquin Phoenix here. I was looking for things like color schemes for line work, kind of like the idea of highlighting some features or sort of looking at how I can integrate some textures and patterns. The next thing I did was snap a portrait mode photo of my face that I could use as sort of a starting point, a template. And I realized that this didn't have to be an amazing picture. It didn't really matter what kind of shirt I was wearing or anything because I was just gonna be sketching over this, kind of tracing it on my iPad. 
All right, and so then what I did was I loaded it into Procreate, which is one of my favorite spaces to get creative on an iPad. And I set the layer opacity down quite a bit. So you can see I can change the opacity. I put it down pretty far so that I could just have something still visible, but then I could go ahead and start sketching over that on a new layer. So what I did was I picked some black, then I got a nice sketchy brush and kind of tested it out over here. And then I just got to sketching and you know, this didn't have to be perfect. Um, and I could play around with different styles. So maybe for the hair, I kind of like this pencil look and uh, just kind of get going. Gotta say, I really do. I know it's a sponsor of a lot of the videos, but I really do like the way that the paper like feels on the iPad Pro. It just takes things to a new level, a different level when you're doing something creative like this. And so I came in and just did some rough sketching of all the different elements, the facial features, and for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of part of the style that I was going for was something that wasn't just 100% perfect. And this is really something that anybody can do because you're just kind of tracing. Everybody can trace, right? So you can kind of zoom in and just be a little bit more accurate uh, with whatever you're trying to accomplish here. Like I said, um, part of the style here was not to be 1000% photorealistic or accurate. And that takes some of the pressure off in terms of, you know, having people think, oh, that doesn't look quite right. Just kind of a basic sketchy outline, like a starting place. And then so after a while, I just sort of came up with some hair that I liked. And then I made a new layer for like an ear and neck and a shirt and eyes and a mouth and some wrinkles. The wrinkles are here. That's just a part of life. And I decided that it needed a little bit of extra detail in the face. So I started adding in some extra marks and layers that again, aren't, aren't perfect, um, just to add a little bit of contrast. So it's not just 100% flat. There's a little bit of depth there and more detail. And then after that, I decided to put in some color underneath on a layer under the sketch layer, just to kind of start playing around with how I could make this pop a little bit. So I continued to play around with it and I duplicated some layers, make it a little bit darker. And I kind of threw in some glitches so that the lines weren't 100% perfect. And I went back with the eraser and kind of erased a little bit in there just to add a little texture and fun. So we kind of started with the picture that looked like this and then ended up with this. And then of course this whole time I'm jumping back and forth and referencing some of these uh, sketches in my mood board, just kind of get some ideas about how I may want to actually uh, add some color to this cover. The iPad just makes it so easy to just switch back and forth like this. So it really was easy to reference something and then pop back over here and make some changes. So after that, I just simply started adding some pops of color. One thing about Procreate is that they have some really awesome texture brushes. Pick a color that I kind of like and then come in and just kind of fill in the blanks. And you can add some extra shading here. And I love the undo too, it's just two fingers to undo. And so I just continued to sort of play around with different colors and schemes and different brushes until I found something that was kind of a cool look. And a lot of it is just experimentation for me. Like sometimes I don't know what a brush does and so I just test it out. And sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. And same thing with colors too. And you can also play around with negative space and just kind of work in the background, you know? And that's kind of cool too. And you can already see, we're starting to create some really interesting, unique looks. But at the end of the day, what I really settled on liking was the abstract brush called Hexavector. And it changes color based on the pressure of the Apple Pencil. And so what I did was I just took a, a few strokes and kind of colored through like this. And just kept going until I kind of wound up with something that I liked that looked not super coordinated or, or too well thought out, just kind of quick and varied that pressure kind of a little bit. And then you can play around with adding in, you know, some texture, cause this is a brush that has a unique tip to it. You can add different colors and whatever. And anyways, I really ended up settling on this pattern here. I thought that was pretty cool. So the next step is to add some text. So what I ended up doing was sharing this file and then I went over to Affinity Photo and opened that up. And the reason I'm using Affinity Photo instead of Photoshop for iPad is because Photoshop for iPad is just not quite there yet. Affinity Photo, funnily enough, is really the best Photoshop for iPad still. And this is an app that I use a lot. So here's an old thumbnail that I was working on from several weeks ago. 
And then once I'm in Affinity, I just come into this three dot menu here and say place, place from photos or iCloud, wherever you saved it. I'm going to place it right here. And I don't need it to fill up the whole thing because I got to leave some room for some text. Now, speaking of text, one thing that was recently updated in iPadOS was the ability to use custom fonts. I did some research and I landed on using iFont to try to load in the official daily tech font, which is Gilroy. And I probably could have spent more time doing this, but eventually it was a long kind of arduous process and I got Gilroy installed. It's officially installed on the device. And then eventually I ended up with a final product that I could then go into Transistor and hit create new episode, even here on the iPad and upload some additional cover art. Looking back at my MindNote document here, I ended up doing some face-based artwork that did come out different than other tech podcasts. And it still clearly represents that yes, I am the host. So yeah, next time you go to the Daily Tech After Party, you're gonna see some artwork that was from this video. And that's gonna be it, moving into the future, unless we ever decide to redo it. So you got to actually see it in action right now, today. If you own an Apple Pencil or are looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike with Nano Dots, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about Paperlike with Nano Dots is that it's much clearer to watch movies and view content even when you're not drawing or writing. But of course, Paperlike actually gives you more control when you are writing or drawing thanks to the Paperlike resistance that it offers. And yeah, it really makes a difference. Difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, and who wouldn't want that? When you place your order for Paper Like with NanoDots, you'll get two Paper Like covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can get your own Paper Like with NanoDots using the link down in the description. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for spending some time here hanging out. Don't forget to check out applehype.com every day, Monday through Friday. You should also be sure to check out Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. Those are great places to catch up and see some stuff. If you're not subscribed to all these places, then you're missing out on some of the content. Also, the video version of the podcast is back. So it has a dedicated channel where you can watch the full thing and a clips channel where you can just watch the little segments. So if you wanna check those out, those are linked up down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video or podcast or clip later.